Have you ever encountered a fish like this before? Its mouth is full of sharp, pointed teeth, with a total of 112 teeth. Its chewing power rivals that of a crocodile. It's a prehistoric carnivorous fish, almost like a living fossil. This fish has a strong attacking ability, capable of breaking through glass effortlessly, yet it still presents itself with a sense of grandeur towards humans. These fish often appear in large schools underwater, and they can crush anything in their way. The man in this story is leaping and jumping high, coincidentally landing amidst a school of these flesh-eating fish. This isn't a miraculous event from the heavens, in the end, he's crushed to the point where not even bones remain. The professor reaches his hand in briefly, and one of the flesh-eating fish immediately leaps up. Fortunately, he pulls his hand back in time. Otherwise, his finger would have been sent flying. But how could these prehistoric flesh-eating fish come back to life? What if thousands of these fish were to attack humans at sea? Greetings, everyone, the madness has returned. Today, I bring you an extraordinary horror film titled, Cannibal Fish Lake. The story must begin 24 hours earlier, with a man sitting on a fishing boat on Lake Victoria. Lady Luck seems to be favoring him today, as he catches a big fish. The old man places a beer bottle on the bow of the boat, but the bottle falls into the lake and keeps sinking until it rests on the bottom. Unbeknownst to him, this triggers a butterfly effect, and an earthquake occurs. The ground beneath the lake is upheaved, revealing a large crack, and beneath it, another underground lake. Thousands of prehistoric flesh-eating fish, like demons from hell, emerge. They swim towards Lake Victoria, causing a massive whirlpool on the surface. The old man manages to catch a big fish, and just as he's about to celebrate, his boat is pulled into the whirlpool. He frantically tries to start the engine, but the boat won't budge. A powerful force drags the boat to the bottom. The next moment, he's surrounded by the flesh-eating fish, immediately tearing into him. The water turns blood red. In less than 10 seconds, he's gone. The army of flesh-eating fish begins their assault towards the shores of Victoria. Here, thousands of people are gathered for a summer party. These intelligent fish are strategic. They circle underfoot but don't attack immediately, turning humans into prey. They surround their victims before striking, catching those in the water unaware. The flesh-eating frenzy begins. A woman on a raft is bitten on her buttocks, letting out a horrifying scream as the water turns red around her. This seems to be their signal to attack. The other fish all start moving in the water, creating a cacophony of screams for help. However, underwater, the flesh-eating fish hold the upper hand. Any resistance is futile. The scene becomes more terrifying than words can describe. One girl encounters a maelstrom created by the flesh-eating fish. In an instant, she spun around over 80 times, her body's flesh forced to the surface. People on the shore try their best to pull her out, but they often only manage to retrieve severed limbs. Panic and chaos reign, and one guy in his fear rams his motorboat straight towards the shore, accidentally killing more than 10 people. But he can't escape his fate either. The girl's hair gets tangled in the boat's propeller, and the boat comes to a halt. People in the water start swarming his boat, which tips over due to the crowd, and the flesh-eating fish mercilessly finish off everyone. The police rush in to rescue people. A female officer fires a taser directly at one fish, and it explodes, but it manages to hit another fish entirely unscathed. Another officer shoots into the water, but he runs out of bullets before achieving any results. The police officers are skillful indeed. They detach the propeller from the boat and dip it into the water. The flesh-eating fish's flesh and bones disintegrate rapidly. However, a large number of these fish surround him. The officer yells in despair, slowly sinking into the water, sacrificing himself courageously. They're the most daring research team, about to encounter these prehistoric flesh-eating fish to investigate the crack at the lake's bottom. A diver goes down to assess the situation. Underwater, he witnesses a horrifying scene. The area is filled with the eggs of these flesh-eating fish. As he reaches out to touch them, he's attacked and bitten by one, attracting more of these fish. He ignites a flare to observe and is utterly terrified. Hundreds of flesh-eating fish with their sharp teeth are fixed on him, and they immediately charge and attack. Another diver attempts to assist him, but he's pulled up just in time by a fellow police officer. However, his colleague remains, reduced to a pile of bones. This is the first and only flesh-eating fish that humanity manages to catch. It's promptly taken to a research facility. The container housing the fish emits a loud rumble before releasing it into a fish tank. The doctor discovered that the prehistoric flesh-eating fish was even more ferocious than dinosaurs, which is why there's a scene of him reaching his hand into the tank initially. 
At this time, the main character and his girlfriend were on a tourist boat on Lake Victoria. They were filming a short video for a model with a director. Eventually, they spotted the main character's younger brother and sister on a small island. Just earlier, his sister got injured while playing and her fresh blood attracted one of the flesh-eating fish. Luckily, she managed to get onto the shore in time to escape. The main character wanted to go pick up his two siblings, but the director displayed an impatient attitude. Feeling that he was wasting time, the director's face showed his annoyance. However, the main character mentioned that his mother was a police officer in this town, which forced the director to agree. Little did they know that after picking up the two kids, the director would scold the main character harshly, calling him a scoundrel. By this point, the female model was paragliding above and didn't fall due to the boat stopping. The flesh-eating fish noticed, and luckily, the prey had arrived. The model ascended to the heavens directly. Now, the younger brother and sister saw schools of flesh-eating fish circling underwater beneath the boat. The tourist boat accelerated to escape the underwater weeds, but after a few meters, it hit an underwater rock, causing a significant hole. The powerful impact caused both the director and a female model to fall into the water. The flesh-eating fish immediately attacked, and the younger sister died first, becoming their experience. The blonde girl quickly released the rope ladder onto the boat, instructing the director to grab onto it. When he was pulled ashore, the lower half of his body had turned into minced meat. Water was flooding into the boat, and the main character's girlfriend was trapped below deck. Sitting on top of a cabinet, she looked at the rising water level with increasing worry. The flesh-eating fish in the water grew in number, and the main character called his mother, a police officer, for help. His mother was already rescuing people at sea when she heard her son was in danger. She immediately found a motorboat to come to their aid. Arriving at the scene, the mother threw a rope over. Directing her son to secure the rope to the boat, she utilized her agility, climbing up the rope onto the tourist boat after reassuring her children. She held onto the rope, using it to cross over to the other side of the boat. She was halfway there when the fixed rope became loose, causing her to dip into the water. Fortunately, a colleague swiftly steered the boat further, helping to keep the rope taut, enabling the mother to climb onto the tourist boat quickly. Now, only the main character and his girlfriend remained in the water. Unexpectedly, he removed the rope, wanting to go down to rescue his girlfriend. The main character threw the director's body into the water to distract the fish. He then dove down alone. At the same time, his girlfriend fought the flesh-eating fish with a frying pan. Each fish that lunged at her met a strike until they were all attracted to the body the main character had thrown down. This gave her a brief respite. The main character opened all the gas valves in the boat's compartment. He swam over to his girlfriend, telling her to hold onto him tightly. At the same time, he held a walkie-talkie, telling his mother to start the motorboat when he counted to three, and he would ignite a gas bomb. Utilizing the explosion's force to deal with all the flesh-eating fish. Upon hearing her son's plan, the mother agreed right away. They began counting and then jumped into the water. But at that very moment, the motorboat failed to start. And the flesh-eating fish had finished feeding and were swimming back towards the main character. The main character threw a flare into the gas area, and his mother and colleague tried again. Eventually, the last motorboat started, but it suddenly pulled them away. An explosive sound echoed, and the gas bomb detonated. The explosion created an immensely powerful shockwave that instantly killed thousands of flesh-eating fish. The main character and his girlfriend were pulled onto the motorboat, and everyone was overjoyed. The danger seemed to have passed, but the situation wasn't that simple. Over the professor's radio, he informed the main character's mother that, based on his research, there were even more flesh-eating fish than they had witnessed, and they were much more aggressive. The main character's colleague thought the professor was exaggerating. As soon as he finished speaking, a gigantic, supersized flesh-eating fish appeared underwater and dragged him in. This fish was over 10 times the size of the ones in the tank, indicating that the invasion of the prehistoric flesh-eating fish was far from over. The movie ends here. As for this episode's question, what do you think would happen if a hundred flesh-eating fish fought against a mature crocodile? Press 1 if you think the flesh-eating fish would win, and press 2 if you think the crocodile would win. Thank you for watching our video, and goodbye until next time.